Hi everyone! Today I'm going to show you how I create my line drawings for my pastel paintings using the grid method. Now I start off in pencil and I often create a few freehand sketches, just very quick little things to get a feel for some of the proportions, in this case especially on the face as that eye was very important. And I just use one of these mechanical pencils. I like them because they're very light, you can rub out very easily. And because I'm working on velour pastel paper, I want to do my sketch on a separate piece of cartridge paper like this and then transfer it over. And you can see some videos on that on my YouTube channel also. If you're working on another type of pastel paper, you can perhaps put the grid directly onto your pastel paper and sketch on there. So this is my grid very faintly drawn onto some cartridge paper. Um, I've just put enough on there to accommodate the shape of the hair. And I've also given myself an extra cross which goes directly through the hair's eye. I really want that eye to be dead centre in the painting, so this extra cross there is going to help. And I make a start with the mechanical pencil. I'm finding the outline of the body, first of all. And I do start very faintly, so that if I want to remove any lines, it's quite easy to do so and I'm holding the pencil very lightly making little straight edged marks not looking for any detail at this stage I just want to find a very rough outline of the hair shape and I might work a little differently if I'm not using a grid so when I did the freehand sketches I might work a little more loosely find uh, use bigger shapes to find the shape of the body but when I have the grid here it uh, allows me to just use those horizontal and vertical lines to judge the distances and get everything in proportion. So second time around the shape you can see I'm leaning a little bit heavier and this time I'm not just looking for the, the basic outline I'm looking for the wrinkles of fat there down the back starting to look for a, a little more detail and just at the bottom of the hair here I'm not really too concerned with uh, his feet or anything in my painting I'm planning on having him in a buttercup meadow so the bottom part of the hair is going to be very obscured in my painting and here I just noticed that I I made his chest a little bit too low, a little bit too deep, so I bring that back up a touch. All the time looking at the negative spaces and using that and the grid lines to help me gauge my proportions accurately. And still very rough, loose, sketchy use of the pencil. Now I can start to hone in on certain areas, really start to look at the, the individual shape of things. I don't really need my line drawings to be super detailed for my pastel painting, but I do like to have all the proportions figured out by that stage so that I can then transfer on a really nice clean line drawing to get started with. Hares have such unusual shaped heads, their bulbous eyes seem to come out of the sides of their heads and it's always tricky to get the three-quarter view of any animal but I always find especially with the hair, uh, their, their muzzle around the nose area, everything is so different to other animals, in particular dogs. I don't use a very big grid. Uh, I like the two inch grid. It doesn't allow me to get very fiddly with the, the method, but it gives me more than enough for most subject matters to keep me right. And now I start with the eye, which 
covers that cross section I've given myself on the face. And I'll start with the pupil. And later on I'll have to come back and work a little more at the pupil shape. If you notice on a hare's eye you get almost like a kidney bean shaped pupil which is very unusual. But for now I'm just trying to find the rough outline of the pupil, the iris and then that outer outline of the hare's eye. Always be careful with your your lines around the top and bottom of eyes. In this case, the line at the bottom of the hare's eye is almost completely horizontal. And I bet if sketching it freehand, you might be tempted to put this at more of an angle, just because of the angle of the hare's head. And sometimes using the grid can alert you to these uh, mistakes and make you better at judging those areas when you are sketching freehand. So I'm just trying to find a bit of form on the face. Everything's covered in such a crazy layer of fur. I don't really need to go into a lot of detail. I'm just trying to find the, the prominent areas where the fur really describes uh, a muscle or a jawline. And as I get more confident with my lines, I lean a little bit heavier. And with this eye on the other side of the face, it's, it's so tricky because we can see so little of it. I just have to be confident about the angle of the eyebrow and a little hint at that pupil sticking out. So now I'm moving to within the shape of the body and I'm not going into any detail as such, just trying to find a few more of the, the muscle shapes where the legs join onto the body. This is stuff I will tackle later on when I come to it with the pastels. I'm, I'm happy as long as I have the outline pretty well in proportion. But I do like sometimes to get a feel for the, the muscular shapes on the animal and make sure that I've got everything nicely in proportion. So when it gets to this stage, I like to take the rubber and get rid of my grid lines. I find them a little confusing. Now I've got the, the main outline of the animal in. I want to have a good look at it. And it just knocks my drawing back a stage, gives me a chance to go back over now and make some finer tweaks to the drawing. And I'm able to come back in and add a little more depth to the pencil marks. I'm never too concerned with this initial drawing, how it looks. It's just a means for me to get the main subject onto the pastel paper. To be honest, I usually end up throwing these away because I cover the back of the piece in pastel and use it to transfer my image onto the pastel paper. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing this. That's how I usually create my line drawings for pastel paintings. If you haven't already subscribed, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. And a big thanks to all my patrons over on my Patreon channel who are making all of these videos possible. If you can, have a look at my Patreon channel. Lots more in-depth tutorials there. Thanks for watching. See you next time.